Press my way through. Press my way through. I can't give up now. I got to press my way through. I, can I get a witness? Press my way through. Press my way through. God's got a blessing. If I press my way through. Come on, help me say that. Press my way through. Press my way through. I can't give up now. Gotta press my way through. Press my way through. Press my way through. Come on, quiet. Let's press my way through. Press. Everybody, press my way through. Press my way through. Press my way through. Oh, press my way through. Can't give up now. Can't give up now. Press my way through. Oh, press my way through. Yes, press my way through. God's got something waiting. Press my way through. Press my way through. Press my way through. I can't give up now. I must press my way through. Press my way through. Press my way through. If I press my way through, press my way through. Shout my way through, shout my way through, shout my way through. God 
has got something waiting, yes, if I've shoved my way through. Come on, lift your hand. Yes. Press my way through. Press my way through. Shove my way through. God got something waiting. If I press my way through, I got to press my way through. God got something waiting. I said, God got something waiting. Sometimes I don't know what to do, but I know that God. I tell you, God's got something waiting. Look to your neighbor and say, God says, God's got something waiting. I want to repeat this. God's got something waiting. God's has got something. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. I know you believe it. And if you just don't believe it, believe it because it's so. Because God does have something waiting. Thomas said, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be faithful unto the Lord and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his precious blessings are everlasting. And we endureth in his him forever. Our blessed Father, we thank you for bringing us together again to worship you. May each one of us worship you in spirit and in truth. Those who don't know you, God, we pray that they will come to know you. We come to this place to lift you up, to continue to thank you for your loving kindness, the day down that you have blessed us with today. May we rejoice and be glad in it. Father, we thank you. Pray that you bless everything here that will go into your name, lifting you up. The word of God, as you've anointed your manservant to preach to us. Your voice is the choir that you have anointed to sing the gospel to us. Father, help us to worship God together in spirit and in truth. It's in your precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Lord, thank you, sir. We will now have our congregation. Come and, Come and go with me to my father's house, my father's house. Come and go with me, yeah, to my father, where there is joy, joy, yeah, everything is all. My father's house, my father's house, everything is all right, yeah, in my box, where there is, yeah, many mansions there, where in my box, my father's house, my father's Many mansions there, yeah, in my father, where there is joy, joy, yeah, no more dying there, yeah, in my, in my father's house, in my father's house, no more dying there, where Well, there is joy. 
Yeah, everything is all right now. Yeah, in my in my father's house. In my father's house. Everything is all right. Yeah, in my father's joy, joy, joy. Come and go with me. To my, to my father's house, to my father's house, to my father's house. Come and go with me, yeah, to my father's where there is joy, joy, yeah. Come and go with me, yeah, to my, my father's house. My father's house, won't you go with me? Yeah, to my father, where there is joy, nothing but joy, joy, joy. Praise God. That's one thing about it. The tickets flow down freely on Calvary and cost you anything except to accept him as Lord and Savior. Amen. And then you got your ticket punch, you on your way. Doesn't matter about how long the line is, you got guaranteed a seat there. Amen. Amen. I thank God for Jesus. We're going to read our scripture from the 53rd Psalm uh, of Isaiah. I'm at 53rd chapter of Isaiah. The 53rd chapter of Isaiah. And the prophet writes here, Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground. He hath no form or comeliness. And whom shall we see him? And when we see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and he was este we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our grief and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. Verse 5. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray and have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. Amen. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, mm -hmm. yet he opened not his mouth. Mm -hmm. For he is brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb. So he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation. For he was cut off out of the land of the living, for the transgression of my people was he stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death, because he had no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He was put he was put to grief when thou shalt when thou shalt make his grief when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. I have to just kind of breathe here a little bit. I had some surgery. Got to get these things together. The letters are running. He shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Verse eleven. He shall see of the travail of his soul, and shall satisfy. For his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many. For he shall bear their iniquities. And verse 12. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great. And he shall divide the spoil with the strong. Because he has, he has poured all his soul unto death. And he was numbered with the transgressors and he bare the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressor. Amen. So ends the 
53rd chapter of Isaiah. We will now have an offering brought forth by the ushers. They that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And they that give must give in spirit and in truth that the Lord will receive it. Our precious Father, we thank you for this time of offering. We thank you, God, for laying it on our hearts and encouraging us to be obedient to your word. You told us to bring our tithes and offerings into your house, that there may be that to take care of the poor, those in need, and whatever you so desire. And God, as they have given according to your word, will you bless each one accordingly, according to their faith. We thank you in the name of Jesus. We thank you for this place here, this sanctuary, that you have provided everything that we need and then some. Father, we're grateful. There's so many that are struggling in which they had a place, but God, you have provided us a place. Help us to take it not for granted. Help us, God, to use everything to your glory. In this Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen and amen. Lord. All things. I wanted to give God a praise for Brother Billy. I think this is the second Sunday that he's walked into this place. Yeah. Yeah. Praise God. Mm. Mm -hmm. He was excited to tell me something, and I thought it was about the Redskins, the commander's house. But it was about how God had blessed him and given him strength to walk inside. Amen. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Our God is good. We certainly thank God for Jesus, and he's done it for Billy. He'll do it for the rest of us. Yes, he can. That's the thing about him. And so I just praise God for that, and I thank God for each of you who make your way out and come out each Sunday. It's a blessing, and we hope that our fellow brothers and sisters will be able to count it as a privilege and take advantage of this opportunity. That's right. Because so many can't gather together in Come on, somebody. You understand? Yeah. We have this opportunity, right. cushions and everything. We ought to run into the house of God. Like the psalmist says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. You're not doing pastor a favor. You're doing what God has That's commanded. Right. Forsake not the assembling of yourselves together, right. as the manner of some is. Right. We praise God for Jesus. And after the message and song from the choir, the next voice you'll hear will be my favorite pastor. <laughs> All right. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. So this next song, even though we sung it before, it's for me today because you never, never, ever will know what God has in store. But what he has in store, whether it be tragic or be happy, it's what he has ordained it to be. So that's why every day I give God the praise because somebody didn't wake up this morning. Somebody didn't wake up in their right mind this morning. Somebody woke up this morning and pain was all over their body. But I'm going to tell you one thing. I can only testify for myself that every day, regardless of what happens to me in my body, my mind, or with my spirit, I'm going to give God the praise. Hey, come on, give God another hand clap of praise. Come on, choir. Come on, let's go. If you would, just put your hands together. Let's just get into praise, all right? Every day, every day. Every day, I praise the Lord from the rising of the sun to the, 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 the good. 
it down. I'm telling you every day. Every day I praise the Lord. You're so worthy. You're so worthy. Worthy to be praised. Come on, let's do that again. Oh, every day. Every day I praise the Lord. From the right Sun to the going down. Oh, every day, every day, I the Lord because He's so worthy. I clap my hands. When things come out around, I stomp my feet. I stomp my feet. To praise the Lord. I stomp my feet. I stomp my feet. To praise the Lord. I stomp my feet. I stomp my feet. To praise the Lord. You're so worthy. When things happen, this is what I do. I lift my hands. I lift my hands to praise the Lord. I lift my hands. I lift my hands to praise the Lord. I lift my hands. I lift my hands to praise the Lord. You're so worthy. ought to be everybody's testimony this morning. Delivered. Into the kingdom. That's true. So somebody say, oh, yeah.
case you missed that. Come on, we're going to say it again. If you don't know it, but he did it. Amen. And into? Lord, thank God for what you did on the cross. Amen. What he did on the cross, he did. This is what he did this morning. He woke, he woke. woke me up this morning. And he let me see another day. He, he gave me health and strength. He gave me health and strength. And let me see. Oh, yes, he did. Oh, yeah. 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 I hear you out there. Oh, oh, yeah. Can you lift your hands and say, Be joy, be joy. Come on, church. Be joy. Think to yourself and say, Be Let the church say amen. How many know this morning? Amen. The choir is already in my message this morning. Amen. You'll see just in a few minutes. Amen. They're already in my message. Same word the Lord gave them. I got the same word I'm going to preach on this morning. Amen. So praise his holy name. Let's have a word of prayer. Amen. You can go, go ahead and turn me over to the book of Philippians, the fourth chapter. Starting at that fourth verse, amen, and you'll see what the Lord is telling us this morning, all of us in the room, amen, he's charging us to be a people that have a heart that rejoice. Well, Father, it's in the name of Jesus that we come again to say thank you. We thank you, Lord God, for life. We thank you for health. 
and we thank you for strength. We thank you, God, that we're closed in our right mind. We thank you for eyes to see and ears to hear. We thank you, God, for every limb that, God, you have created to be a part of our body is operating according to your will. We thank you this morning for your blood. Because, God, your blood has already been shed for the remission of sin. And we thank you for the Holy Spirit, who is our comforter and who is our guide, who brings all things to our remembrance. But we thank you, Lord God, for your word. For your word is a lamp to our feet. It is a light unto our pathway. And, Father, as we come this morning, we are just grateful that you are God and beside you there is none other. You tell us in your word that we are to enter into the grace with thanksgiving to that course with praise and to bless your name. For the Lord is good and his mercy endured unto all generations. What a blessing, God, that we have a truth that God will endure to every generation in the name of Jesus. Father, thank you, God, for this assembly. Thank you for those who, Lord God, who made up in their mind to come out to the household of faith this morning. One have come for one thing and one have come for another. But God, we all come to give your name the honor and the praises. For you are God and beside you there is none other. Now, Father, thank you for the opportunity again. That God, you've given me the opportunity, Lord God, to stand in this secret, this sacred place. To prepare and to preach your gospel. You said, how can they hear without a preacher? How can he preach unless he's been sent? How beautiful are the feet of those who carry the gospel of peace, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, that you called us out, Lord God, to proclaim your word. And I pray this morning, God, that you'd anoint me afresh. Allow your anointing to rest upon my life, God. Less of me and more of you stir up the gift that's on the inside of us, God. Let us preach, Lord God, with power and revelation in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray as we minister the word of God, someone in this room will be encouraged to continue on running on to see what the end going to be because the race is not given to the swift nor the battle to the strong, but he that endured to the end. Now, God, we give your name, the glory, the honor, the praise as we thank you that you are God who knows all. You see all. You have all power in your hand. Breathe through these, these nostrils, God. Breathe through these lips of clay, Lord God, that your people, Lord God, would be encouraged to continue on trusting and believing by faith that you are God. And beside you, there is none other. We give your name, the glory, the honor, the praise as we thank you for it. We count it done, Lord God. It is so in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, clap your hands this morning if you believe that. Amen. Well, we first give God the honor and give God the praises. We give God the glory. We're excited, amen, this morning, amen. We're excited, first of all, because we know God to be God. And know I said, we know him to be God. It's just not a belief, saints to God. It's something that we have experienced, amen, to know that he is God, amen. And besides him, there is none other. We praise God again this morning for our wife, amen. Thank God for the first lady. Give God the honor and glory for her and all that she do. Amen. To not only support this ministry, amen, to support me as her husband and her pastor, amen, to do all that God has called us out to do, amen. Praise you, Holy, Holy Ghost, amen. Praise the Lord, amen. Thank God for Reverend Staten this morning. Thank you, Reverend Staten, amen, for your exhortation, amen, to exhort this congregation to let them know, amen, their coming is not in vain. And we are so excited, amen, that we have, amen, individuals who will exhort, amen, and say the same thing, amen. The word will say unto God's people. Thank God for our deacons this morning. We praise God for you. Thank God for our trustees, amen. Thank God, amen, for our ushers this morning. Praise God for the media ministry. Thank God for any guests that we have in the room this morning. We praise you, amen, for you making your way out to be a part of this time of ministry with us. Thank God for our choir, amen. Come, come on, give God a hand clap of praise for our choir this morning. Amen. But thank God most of all for you, saints. Amen. It is a blessing. Amen. Every time we come into the room to say thank you for being who you are. Amen. You know, we live in a world that many, many times that people don't have gratitude to say thank you. And I want to let you know, amen, every time that I'm in your presence, I am grateful to you for what you're doing. Amen. And grateful for you that you'll continue on holding on and being an example in the world that we live in. There are so many people 
that need to see us as people of God continue on standing. Amen. Because many people are falling, saints. Amen. Believe it or not. They're giving up. Amen. They're throwing in the tower. They're walking away because, amen, for whatever reason it may be. But every time we come into this room, amen, and you're still standing, amen, you're still staying, amen, you're still trusting, you're still believing, it let me know that our God is still real. Amen. Yeah. And so we give God the honor and glory for that this morning. Don't ever take it for granted. Amen. Don't ever take it for granted that the strength that you are, that God has given you, that you are continue on standing in the midst of a dark, dark world. Amen. And every time they see us, amen, they may call us old-fashioned. Amen. They may call us antique. Amen. They could call us, amen, outdated. Amen. But one thing that they will not call us is not being unfaithful. Amen. We're going to be a faithful people, amen, that God may be glorified. And so we thank you, amen, Carriage. Thank you, as always, for being who you are and continue on doing all that God has ordained you to do, amen. Or yet, the book of Philippians, Philippians, the fourth chapter, amen, starting that fourth verse. Going to talk about this morning, the Lord gave me a very prophetic word, amen. Going to talk about, amen, a message from an inmate, a message from an inmate. That's what we're going to talk about this morning. A message from an inmate. Amen. When we look at the word, amen, inmate, inmate is a person that is confined to an institution such as a prison or even a hospital. And as an inmate, amen, uh, an inmate is a person who is, has been incarcerated for some time breaking the law, amen, that was placed before them. Now, we all know that we live in a world that many people who go to jail, sometimes they go to jail and they've never committed a crime. But even if they are in jail, amen, they are considered to be an inmate during their time of serving their sentence behind the four walls. Now, if we think about it this morning, amen, we know throughout history, amen, as a people of color, We've had a lot of people who have went to jail for some time a worthy cause, amen. We, if we think about history, amen, we know Dr. Martin Luther King was one of the main people that we could probably talk about this morning that went to, the, went to jail on many different occasions because he stood up for what was right, amen. And many times when he stood up for what was right, amen, he was, amen, prosecuted for wrongdoing. And even during his time in jail, amen, we know that, amen, if you do study or do research, we know that Dr. King wrote a letter, amen, from the Birmingham jail. And he writes this letter in appeal because he had many, many different critics, amen, was talking about his timing was not right at the opportunity that he was doing this. And when you think about that letter, amen, I encourage many of you to go out and do some research and look at his letter that he wrote, amen, when he was in that Birmingham jail, how he took time out of his day, amen, to write to people that was criticizing him for standing up what was for what was right. So when we think about Dr. King, Dr. King was an inmate, and he was given a message from behind the four walls to encourage people to let them know that what he was doing was not only for them, but for the generation that come behind them. Are y'all with me this morning? And so this morning, when we think about that, amen, amen, we, we, many, many times in our biased mindsets, amen, we believe, amen, that if a person is incarcerated, they would have no use or they would have no, uh, nothing, no advice to give, you, give individuals because they've done wrong. However, that, to, that goes totally against the word of God because the word of God, Jesus makes it plain when he talks about from the book of Matthews. He says, for when, for when I was hungry, you gave me something to eat. He said, when I was thirsty, you gave me, amen, nothing to drink. When I was in prison, you came not down to see me. So Jesus helps us understand that even when a person is locked down behind the four walls, they still have potential to cause a major impact upon people's life. And I wonder this morning, amen, if we had, amen, about 20 prisoners that would just write, care, write to Carrie's Baptist Church, amen, and gave us a prophetic word of what God was speaking to them about our ministry, would we take note to what they're saying, amen? Or would we be people to say, I don't know these people, amen, I don't, amen, have no dealing with them. Why are they writing me? Why are they telling me what God is telling them behind the four walls for me to do here, here at Carrie's Baptist Church? Well, when we think about that this morning, saints of God, that's what the Apostle Paul is. The Apostle Paul was an inmate behind four walls 
but he still had a heart and a desire for the people of God to go in the right direction. Y'all with me this morning? So it lets us understand this morning, no matter what situation a person may be in, no matter if they've done good or they've done bad, God can still use that individual to speak his word. So Paul is in a Roman jail because he stands for the gospel of Jesus Christ. But during his time in jail, he allowed God to use him to bring forth the message of hope to the saints. In his letter to the church at Philippi, Philippians, Paul encouraged the church to always have an attitude to advance no matter what comes their way. Now listen to what I tell you, saints of God. This man of God is behind the four walls, but he is writing to people to have an attitude to always advance no matter what takes place in their life. And I wish I had one or two people in this room this morning that would say, Pastor, I don't care how old I get, amen. I don't care how many aches and pains I feel, amen. I'm going to always have a mindset to advance in the world in which we live in. I don't know if I have anyone in the room, amen, that can make that declaration this morning, but you ought to look at yourself this morning and tell yourself that no matter how old you get it, amen, no matter how, aches, how many aches and pains that you have, the longest the God who you know that lives on the inside of you, you're going to advance Amen. To do better than you did yesterday. Are y'all with me this morning? So Paul writes this letter. And he's writing this letter to a people about advancement. And he writes to them behind the four walls. And he writes to them to encourage them that I have a message for you. And so Paul, when he writes this letter, he writes, amen, to the church that the church would be a people of advancement. And saints of God, I don't know about you, amen, this morning. Many, many times we believe that advancement is based upon numbers. Can I tell you? Can I get a witness this morning? Many times we believe advancement is based upon how much we collect, amen, in the offering place. But advancement is based upon you and I being a people that would walk after the spirit but not after the flesh. Pastor, what are you saying to us this morning? What I'm saying to us all of this morning, that no matter, amen, how old you and I may, be, may become, and no matter, amen, how many aches and pains we have in our body, as long as the Lord... Lord God lives on the inside of you and I. We have the ability to press towards the mark. Amen. As long as the power of God lives on the inside of us, God has called you and I out to be lights in this dark, dark world and to cause those people who don't know who he is to move forward in life. So Paul writes this letter and he writes from a mentality that he's in jail. But saints of God, just because he's behind the four walls, it did not mean that his mind was in jail. Amen. I've, amen. In my time of ministry, I used to do prison ministry. And when I would go to the prison, amen, I would be a person that would go into that place. And many, many times I was ministered to from those prisoners more than they was ministered by me. Because their mind, because their bodies were behind the four walls, it does not mean that their minds were behind, behind the four walls. And saints of God, you can be free, amen, and have all the access, amen, and have all the abilities, amen, and have all the freedom to go here and go there. But if your mind is not free, are y'all this morning if your mind is not free amen you will not go forward in the things of God so this morning there are three points I want to share with you that Paul shows us in the scriptures as a born-again believer as he gives his message amen from an inmate there are three things he shows this church what they are to have in order to advance in life well, if you're taking notes this morning, the first thing he tells them in that verse 4, he says, I want you to focus on the Lord. Focus on the Lord. Well, Pastor, what the focus mean? Focus means when a person is focused, they are aiming towards a direction that will cause them to benefit and to be beneficial to someone else. So Paul says right here in the verse 4, right here, look what your Bible says. The Bible says, he says, rejoice in the Lord, amen, always. And he says again, I say, rejoice. So Sister Rose, what Paul tells the church this morning, he says, amen, my message to you is that you have no reason why not to rejoice. Are y'all with me this morning? 
When we look at our, around this room, I know, amen, if I had an x-ray machine, amen, I know that some of us think that we don't have nothing to rejoice about. But every one of us that here in our right mind with eyes that we can see and ears that we can hear, we can rejoice. So Paul says that if you're going to be a person of advancement, it's going to come with you understanding that you can rejoice. Now, when you think about that, the believer can always rejoice in the Lord when they know the joy of the Lord is their strength. That's Nehemiah, the 8th chapter, 10th verse. So as a born-again believer, amen, I can always have joy, amen, because I know the joy of the Lord is my strength, amen. And if I know the joy of the Lord is my, my strength, every situation that God brings me to, every situation that God allows me to be a part of, I know that he's working it out for my good. Are y'all with me this morning? The reason why we can rejoice, saints of God, Paul says it this way, he says, and, and he says, and we know that all things work for the good of those who love the Lord and who are called according to their purpose. So when you think of life from that, ex that situation, yes, I know the storm may be coming, amen, and I know the rain may be pouring down, but you got to realize, amen, if God is allowing the storm and the rain to come down, it's going to work for your good, amen. I know, amen, tribulation and sorrow may be taking place, amen, in your life. But if God is allowing these things to happen, you've got to know that God is working it for your good. So Paul says this morning to the church, amen, he's writing from this, this prison. He says, if you're going to be a person that's going to advance, amen, in God, you've got to focus on the Lord. Amen. Come on, look at your neighbor one time and tell your neighbor, God's calling you to change your focus. Your focus now must be on the Lord. Pastor, what does that mean? That means that every time I go through a situation in my life, I've got to look to him who is the author and the finisher of my faith. Every now and then when I go through a time where I don't understand, come here, amen, scripture, the Bible said lean not to thy own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge him and he will direct his path. So Paul tells the church at Philippi, no matter what you are experiencing, to rejoice. Oh, my God, I wish I had one or two people in this room would just get happy, just to get happy, amen. Get happy because you got breath in your lungs. Get happy, amen, because God is really on your side. Are y'all with me this morning? I'm not one of those melancholy people, saints of God. I like to have a good time no matter where I go. And having a good time every now and then, you got to rejoice. Even though my, my, my face may not be smiling, my heart may be smiling, amen. Even, amen, I'm not laughing, amen, ultimately, amen, I'm laughing on the inside, amen. Even though, amen, it seems like, amen, I'm not being encouraged on the outside, but my heart is encouraged because the God whom I serve is able to do everything but fail. So Paul says this morning, he said, rejoice in the Lord always. And then he says again, I say, to rejoice. Paul gives them a witness to say, listen, I'm in a Roman jail. I'm locked down, amen, with chains on, on me, amen. But you as a body of believers, you are free, amen. And if you are free, you don't have no reason not to rejoice. I wish I had one in the room, amen. So, Pastor, amen, I'm just going gonna, gonna, gonna to be happy just to be happy, amen. I'm going to be happy because I know that God is on my side. So he says in the scripture, this inmate writes this letter, and he says, I want you to be focused on the Lord. Because thanks to God, if we're not focused on God, we can't rejoice. Because when the winds come and when the rains come, amen, if we're focused on the wind and rain and not focused on the person who sends the wind and the rain, we will not rejoice about the wind, winds and the rain. Are y'all with me this morning? Second point Paul says in the scripture that not only do I want you to focus on the Lord, but watch this. He says, I want you to fellowship with one another. Look what the scripture said, that fifth verse. Paul says in the scripture, he says, let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. So this inmate's message is to let your gentleness be known to all men. What does that mean? That means that you and I as a born-again believer, our character as a believer should be fair and fitting. Are y'all with me this morning? 
When he says to be gentle, he is saying that we should have a fair and we should have a fitting character towards one another. Now, why is that so important? Because the world in which we live in, they are used to Christians being ungodly people. And Jesus said it this way. He said, you will know my disciples, not how much they pay, not how they dress, but you will know my disciple how they love one another. Are y'all with me this morning? So when Paul says, amen, the fellowshipping with one another, he is saying that when we come, when you come together, your love and gentleness has to be different than what the world gives us. Thanks to God, I understand when I go to work every day that people are going to lie on me and they are going to betray me and they're not going to be, amen, committed to the things that we're supposed to be doing as a mission. But when I come to the household of faith, I'm looking for folks, amen, to be sincere and genuine about what God has ordained and called them out to do. Are y'all with me this morning? So when it comes to the ministry of God, it's different than what I do at work, amen, because yes, I don't work with everybody that's saved, and I don't work with everybody that's born again, but when I come into the household of faith, amen, if you say that your God is my God, and my God is your God, amen, we ought to be gentle, amen, and we ought to, amen, be, amen, to be, be kind to one another, and you should know that. Are y'all with me this morning? That's why the word of God said you shall know the tree, amen, know the fruit by the tree it bear, amen. It says some, 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 some fruit, or not. it says know the, know the fruit by the, know the tree by the fruit it bear, amen. So the word of God tells us, amen, as a born again believer, there are some things that you and I have to know about each other. That's why the Bible tells us, amen, that every man ought to know, amen, those who labor among them. Are y'all with me this morning? And thanks to God, believe it or not, amen, I've been here now four and a half years, amen, going on five years and there are some things I do know about this congregation there are some things I do know about the people that I pastor amen and there are some things amen that God is showing me even more because he wants amen us to fellowship one with another y'all with me this morning that's why the Bible says in Proverbs the 14th chapter 25th verse Solomon said it this way he says a trustful witness saves lives but one who breathes out lies is deceitful. That's what the word of God says. It says a trustful witness. That's the person who saved lives. But one who breathes out lies is deceitful. So the reason why the saints, amen, amen, should be a people that will not operate, amen, in lies is because that's what Satan does. You remember the story, amen? It was Satan, amen, the reason why he lost his place in heaven because he said he was going to raise up among God, amen. He was going to be the next one who to take the throne, amen. And in saints of God, if you associate yourself with Satan, the first thing he's going to do to you is lie to you, amen. Come here, Adam and Eve, in the Garden of Eden, amen. Did not God tell you when you... He never said touch. He told him not to eat of it. Are y'all with me this morning? And so, saints of God, you got to understand something. The fellowship, when we fellowship one with another, we got to have a character that God will be glorified. Are y'all with me this morning? Come on, look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, I'm going to make up in my mind to show you gentleness because my God is gentle. Yeah, every one of us in the room this morning, when we come together, we ought to show each other gentleness. That means that when you find me in a fault, don't persecute me. Amen. Don't walk on top of me. When you find me in a fault, pray for me and help me. Are y'all with me this morning? So this inmate writes from prison to tell the church, don't act like the world acts. And I know that, amen, this may not be popular preaching. Man, but I know it's truthful preaching because there are so many congregations in this hour that we're living in where people got so much old, amen, they got so much, amen, uh, hatred, amen, they got so much turmoil, they can't let go of what happened 20 years ago. But Paul says in the word, he said, let your gentleness be known to all men. He says the Lord is at hand. Meaning that God is the God who judges, amen. He is the one who brings correction in the hour that we're living in. So Paul, second point this morning, if you're taking notes, Paul says that, amen, his message, amen, is not only for you to focus on the Lord, 
But his message is for you to fellowship one with another. Last point, saints of God, if you're taking notes this morning, amen. The last point that Paul tells this church, amen, you got to grab hold to this morning, amen. The last point he says, amen, he says you got to forget about your fears. You got to forget about your fears. Fears are failure. When you forget about something, it's failure to remember it. And saints of God, how do you pull that out, Pastor? Well, right here in verses 6 and 7, look what he says. He says, be anxious for nothing. He says, but in everything, by prayer, supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. So we take that word anxiety or to be anxious. That word means to ex ex experience worry. It means, amen, to be nervous, typically about an, a situation that you have no control over. So, saints of God, many times the reason why folks, amen, are anxious is because those people are the most people who like to keep control of the narrative. Y'all don't know anybody by that name, do you? Amen. Those people, amen, who always try to control things, control the situation, amen. They are the most anxious people. They're the most people that worry, amen. I tell you every Sunday, saints of God, go to bed, go to sleep. God's church, amen, is going to carry on whether you and I are here or not. Are y'all with me this morning? And I know that many of us don't believe that, amen. We believe we've dropped off of the seam, amen. God's house ain't going to go on, but according to his scripture, the Bible said his truth endured unto all generations. That's what the word of God said. That's why I go to bed at night, saints of God. I'm not up all night long worried about carriers and what the people at carriers are doing. I pray for you, amen. I put you before the Lord, and then I go to sleep, amen. Why? Because I, I got to get my rest. Are y'all with me this morning? So Paul says, amen, if you're going to be a person, amen, that's going to move forward and advancement. You got to forget about your fears. Come on, look at your neighbors and neighbor. God's calling you to have amnesia and forget about your fears. Yeah, God is calling all of us in the room to have amnesia, meaning that you cannot control it. Amen. Forget about it. Let God handle it. So Paul says, he says, be anxious for nothing. But look what he says. He says, pray. Pastor, what is prayer? Prayer is communication with God, who, who is a maker of everything. That's why he says to pray. He says pray. He says pray and supplication. Prayer and supplication. What is supplication? The act of asking who makes everything. So he says prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Pastor, what's thanksgiving? Thanksgiving is having a heart of gratitude. So when I go before the Lord, amen, I'm not only just praying and talking to God, I got a heart of gratitude because God, if you said it in your word, if you say by your stripes, I'm healed, God. If you said, amen, you're able to do exceedingly abundantly above all I'm able to ask or think through the power that works in me. If God, you said old things are passed away and behold, all things are new. If God, you said, amen, no weapon formed against me shall prosper and every tongue that rise up against me it shall be the vow. God if you said it I'm going to believe it. Are y'all with me this morning? Yes. Yes. So Paul says right here you need to learn how to forget about your fears. Amen. You're fearing things that God is trying to pull you out of. So he says you ought to pray. And supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be made unto God. And watch what he said. And the peace of God. With the passive all understanding will guard your heart and your mind through Christ. See, last promise Paul tells us in the scripture that when you do it that way, then you will understand Jehovah, Jehovah Shalom. Jehovah Shalom, amen, is the God of peace. And Jesus says, amen, I give you peace, amen. He says in his word, he who keep his mind stayed on me, he'll keep me in perfect peace. So this inmate writes to the church to give them a word of encouragement. Pastor, what are you saying to us this morning? What I'm saying to us this morning, saints of God, that God is trying to help us understand that he has the ability to use anybody. And he has the power to use anybody 
And when he used them, amen, it's for you and I to receive all that he has from. The Apostle Paul, amen, is bound in jail, amen, but he had a heart for the church, amen, and he writes to the church to give them a word of encouragement. Well, saints of God, I'm not in jail this morning, amen, and I don't have no shackles on my hand. I have no shackles on my feet, but I come to let you know this morning that God here, amen, to encourage you, amen, to let you know without a shadow of a doubt, if you are going to be a person that's going to advance in the life in which we live in, you got to keep your focus on God, amen. You got to keep your focus, amen, on the master, amen. You got to look to the hills which come at your help and all your help come from God. If you're going to advance, amen, in the life that God has called us out, we got to fellowship one with another, amen. Every now and then when we fellowship one with another, the Bible says that iron is strong sharp as iron, amen, and so through the conscience of another brother. It's good to fellowship with a believer. Don't you let nobody fool you and make you believe that the church don't have purpose in the hour in which we're living in, amen, because every time I come to this building and every time I hear the choir sing, amen, and every time I shake Brother Eddie's hand, and every time, amen, I see Reverend Staten, amen, exalted, and every time I see your smiling face, amen, it, it, it encouraged me to let me know that God is God and beside him there another. And the last point Paul says, amen, if you're going to advance, amen, you got to understand, you got to forget about your fears, amen. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things are new. God has called you to the forefront, amen, and he's calling you, amen to be a child of God. And so saints of God, amen, as we move forward, amen, to give God thanks, amen. You ought to thank him in the morning, amen. Thank him in the noonday, amen. Thank him, amen, when the sun go down. Thank him when it rain, amen. Thank him when it cold because he is God and beside him there is another. I praise God this morning for the apostle Paul for having such a boldness, God, to love the church even during his time, amen, incarcerated, amen. And he writes to the church to encourage them, to let them no, amen. Weeping shall endure for a season, but joy comes in the morning. And so, saints, rejoice this morning. Rejoice because God is God. Rejoice, amen, because above him there is no other. Rejoice because he's your maker and he's your creator. Rejoice because he's able to do everything but fail. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise this morning if you believe that. A message from an inmate. Man is incarcerated, but he writes to the church. So no matter what you're going through, rejoice in the Lord. And again, I say, rejoice. Paul tells the church, I want you to be gentle. And I want folks to know your gentleness. You know, that's one thing about us as people. We all know each other. We know who is, who is hateful just as well as we know who is loving. We all know each other. You stay around a person long enough, they'll tell you who they are. But lastly, Paul says in the scripture, I want you to forget about your fears. Because he says, be anxious for nothing. But in prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto the Lord. The peace of God, the past of all, and said, will keep your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. Saints, I'm telling you, if we do it God's way, this life of salvation would be such more pleasurable. I didn't get saved, saints. I didn't accept Christ as my Savior to be miserable and sad. But I accepted Christ because I was in a world of sin. And I'm telling you, when he saved me many 30 some years ago, he changed my heart, he changed my attitude. And I refuse to be in his presence and not give him praise. I refuse to be a false witness in the world I live in. I refuse to be a person that operates in fear because God has not given me a spirit of fear, but a spirit of love, power, and a sound. That means, saints, whatever God ordains you and I to do, we can do it. Whatever he, wherever he tells us to go, we can go. Whatever situation he put us in, we will win because he puts us in that situation. And many people, you're paralyzed. People are paralyzed because fear holds them back. 
Paul says this morning, you got to forget about them fears. You can't be anxious. Jesus, on one, one occasion with his disciples, they was worried. Jesus tells them you can't grow tall about worrying. He said, look at the raven. Neither reap nor they sow. Look at the grass. It's cut up and then it's cut down and put in the oven. Now, aren't you better than that raven or that grass? Saints, I'm trying to help us this morning because God is calling us to advance. If we survive 2024, God's calling us to advance. Not to stay where we're at. Changes has to happen to advance. Are y'all with me this morning? You got to be willing to change if we're going to advance. And I just believe by faith that God wants us to advance. I need you to pray for me because I'm going to advance next year. I'm going back to school at ODU to get me a master's degree in counseling, mental health counseling, because I want to help some of these people that got these mental health problems. I want them to advance. So I need your prayer, saints. Amen. I'm trying to move forward. I'm not trying to stay where I'm at. So I need your prayers. Because that ministry of helping other people can help this ministry here carries. I want to advance. And so I take what Paul says literally. Keep your focus on the Lord, Warren. Fellowship, amen, with one another in the body. But most of all, every time fear comes upon you, forget about it. Because God has not given you a spirit of fear, but a spirit of love, power, and sovereignty. Do you believe that this morning, saints of God? you believe that God is calling you to advance? But the only way we're going to advance, we got to take him at his word. Word says, my sheep, they know my voice. And a stranger, they shall not follow. And when God speaks to us, whether he speaks to us in a dream, whether he speaks to us talking to one another, whether he speaks to us through the newspaper, speaks to us through the internet, when he speaks, we got to be willing to receive and move forward in what he tells us. I'm going to ask you to stand on your feet this morning, amen. It's always, amen, the order of God to offer the opportunity that someone would hear this message that's not born again. I believe that every person that's created by God, God places people around them to speak in their lives. Some hear and some don't hear. That's why Jesus on many occasions would say, he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit has to say. And in the hour that we're living in, as I stated earlier, because man is so biased, Man is, have, they have, they have, they, they put people in categories who they will listen to and who they won't, won't listen to. But what I've learned in life, when you just listen to people that's talking, you can learn a lot from them. I didn't say you apply everything, but I said you can learn some things from them. That's what I've learned about life. I mean, if you just stop, take a moment to listen, you can learn a lot from people. Well, I hope someone has heard me this morning and they listen to me and that you're not born again, amen. The word of God tells us according to the scripture that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God is raised and from the dead you shall be saved. For with the heart one believe unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. I pray that someone would hear this message that you're not saved and that you would see me as an inmate this morning but an inmate that writes to you to tell you but that my God is able Paul had the right to say that he had been in the Roman jail for many years him and Paul and Silas get together one one prayer prayer one sing a song and the gates was open Paul knew that God was able and it's amazing when you, when sometimes you're out of your comfort zone, how sensitive you become to God. That's why Paul's letters were so powerful, because he's out of his comfort zone. And by him being out of his comfort zone, his powerful word was more powerful.
powerful to the people he was speaking to. And so this morning, there's someone hear this message, whether through YouTube, whether you're here in the building, you're not born again. I'm just like Paul. I'm writing to you to let you know that our God is able to do everything but fail. God wants us to rejoice, saints. He don't want us to be, amen, people that are burdened down. That's why he says, come unto me, all you who are laboring and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Take my yoke and learn of thee, for I'm low and meek in spirit. You shall find rest, for my yoke is easy. Our burdens are light. God wants us to be people that rejoice. He don't want our hearts to be burdened down over things that are out of our control. You can't control nothing but what's in your own, amen, oasis. And so I pray that someone that's not born again, you will hear this message. And you allow God to change your life. That your joy, your mourning will be turned into joy. Your hatred will be turned into love. But most of all, your fears will be turned into faith. Father, we thank you and praise you again this morning. Lord, for another opportunity of strength that you've given us to stand and proclaim the good news of Christ Jesus. Thank you, Lord God, for the word that you give us, the message, a message from an inmate. Thank you, Lord God, how you show us that even a person that men, women, boys, and girls may just put to the side and say they have no use. Paul was still instrumental in a time of imprisonment and so father i pray in the name of jesus that we as your people lord we never take people for granted the word said that you ring upon the just and the unjust god if you could use a donkey to speak to balaam god you can use anything to speak to us i pray god that we don't allow ourselves to become so prideful and so high-minded that, God, we only listen and hear from those people that we respect. But your word said that we was all made in your image and in your likeness. And you blew breath into all of our lungs. We became living souls. And so, Father, I pray that, God, every person that we come in contact with, that, God, that our ears will be open to see if you're speaking through them. Pray, God, as we hear your voice, we pray, God, that we take heed to it and begin to move forward and do all the things that you've asked us to do. Thank you, Lord God, for what you're doing here at Carriage. Thank you for how you are moving by your spirit. Thank you for, Lord, how you want us to advance and be about your business. Lord, we accept it. We accept the anointing. We accept the mantle that's upon our lives. That, Lord God, we shall move forward and do everything that you have ordained us to do. We thank you, God, that we have a group of individuals here at Carries who have a heart to move forward as well, God. Who have a heart, Lord God, to do more, Lord God, because you said greater works that we shall do because you go to the Father. So, Lord, we stand on your word, God. We will not grow weary. We will not, Lord God, grow weary in well-doing. But we shall receive if we faint not. Lord, I continue on praying for this ministry, Lord God, for every person who has been attacked in their bodies. I plead the blood this morning. I plead the blood, God. I plead the blood in the name of Jesus. God, you said put the blood at the doorpost and the deaf angel will pass. So God, I plead the blood over this ministry. Let your blood be a covenant over us, Lord God, as we go to and far in this dangerous world in which we live in. We thank you and praise you that you are our protector. You are our guide. You are our director. And we give your name the honor and glory. Now, Lord, we love you and we praise you. We magnify your name, God. Thank you for who you are, all that you're doing. Thank you that you're giving us a name that's above all names. At the name of Jesus, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. We bless you, we honor you, and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, choir, you bless us, amen. We prepare to get ready to go home.
no For the benediction now may the grace of our lord and the sweet communion of his holy spirit god let it rest rule and abide within our hearts god i pray that you would go before us tear down what needs to be torn down build and be built up god we plead the blood and we give your name the honor the glory and the praises just for who you are and all that you're doing it's in jesus name we pray amen make sure you hug somebody tell